Wear something age appropriate for this, and when I come back, you can tell me why you dress like a homeless waitress. Have you been born, Ava? Four years, Luleka. Mm. Homecoming, oh, an African Christmas story. This is a South African movie serving up uh, nostalgia with a fresh twist. It tells a story we're all familiar with, leaving the big cities to go back home for the festive holidays. It's a celebration of our culture, a showcase of our talent, with a story that resonates with many. The premiere to this heartwarming film is taking place on the 11th of October, and joining us uh, to share more on the movie is Nguli Sbego, the writer, Leli Maki, the director, and uh, we're hoping to be joined virtually by veteran actress Mamtowo Njinga. Very good morning to you too. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Good morning. Thanks Thank for having us, man. Thanks for having us. It's an absolute pleasure. Leli, I'm going to start with you. This is probably the last movie that uh, uh, Ubabap Timi Kubilana worked on. Share with us the experience that you had with him on set. I love how you go for the jugular straight away. <laughs> <laughs> I do it as well. That's how we roll. That's how we roll. I think <laughs> it was such an honor to work with him. I mean, we had mm. three generations of talent, like from the young Odwanganya Okolazuka to the more like I was at middle age for all Zikona Bali as well, Tari Tindima. And then working with all Dadu Timi and also Mam Togan Jinga was one of the best experiences ever. He was such yeah. a giving performer and just to have his energy on set. And hopefully his portrayal will become known as South Africa's father because right. he was filled with so much warmth. So I'm so glad that this was his last film. Right, right. Mm. Guri, just uh, give us a brief synopsis of what this film is all about. This film is about a family reconnecting over the holiday season. It's about mm. going home and getting back together and filling your cup and catching up on each other's lives when you actually have a chance to do so. Um, unfortunately, the twist to this catch-up mm. is that dad is not well and we have to adjust to a new set of, of rules and a new set of way, the way that life is going to work as this family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I sense a bit of uh, comedy, a little bit of humour there. So how would you classify the genre of this film? I can't escape comedy. Uh, comedy's my blood, <laughs> comedy's my bones. Um, <laughs> I, I was writing a serious drama and it turned out to be really, really funny. <laughs> um, even our dramatic moments, um, we have like little comedic twists because, I mean, one of the things we decided was that um, for this serious discussions in a, in a Kosa family, I don't know about other people's, but my family yeah. are hard to do and so they happen very seldom. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> what we decided to do was this family... Um, takes a more light approach in how we broach serious topics. Mm, um, mm, we, right. we don't like sit down and have it. We go, um, listen, oh, by the way, this is happening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> even though it's a terrible thing. Mm. So it just, it makes it easier to deal with as well when you, right. can, when you can take a moment and like maybe giggle about something that is quite um, devastating as dementia can be. I like mm. that, I yeah. like that. All right, uh, and uh, Umam Tawunjinga is now uh, joining us. A very good Hello. morning to Umam Tawunjinga. Thanks for joining us, welcome. <laughs> Morning. How are morning, you? Morning, my children. <laughs> morning, 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 presenter. Morning, morning, my children. How are you? Good to see you. Looking dashing as always. Thank you. Thank you. And I love the energy, man. You know, you've just uh, injected, uh, you know, uh, an energetic wave and cloud in our studio because I've been up from 4 a.m. <laughs> my energy levels have dropped. Yeah. Let's talk about working with Bob Timmy on this film, Mom Togo, uh, and how that was like for you. Man, I come from the rural. Yes. It made me remember how my grandfather, every December, used to carry his suitcase to ride in a train to go to the to put something like 20 bricks to build his now home that sure. he left for us. Mm. You know, um, milking cows, driving donkeys, all that and all that. Now, when this movie came, it brought all that back to me and the way it is written, Mm. It actually made me feel so warm inside. Mm. It kind of uh, uh, says to me, everything's fine. Everything can be spoken about. Mm. 
you know, all these things happen and they happen for a reason. Mm. When I was in the movie, I think the way Lely directed me, he kept saying, Mama, I see my mother in you. Yes, <laughs> yes. So I had to find, I don't know Lely, I have to find the kind of mother in him so that I could be able to play his mother. <laughs> and I love I love the, the, the way um, the, the, the story was written. It's a Christmas story. Mm. Yes, yes. But the way the kids were brought up, it was like, come home now. Mm. Yeah. Come home now. There's something we need to talk about. So come home now. And in the rural areas, you, do, you don't have to think too many times to say, I'll put money together and get there. If my mother says there's something that needs to be discussed, it means just that. Yes. Let's go and discuss. Guys, let's get into a car and come home. You know? <laughs> so it, it is a beautiful written Christmas story. And I also loved how open the family was. Yeah. It was nothing to say, let's talk around the corner. When the, 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 the talk continued, the little kids were taken out of sensitive areas that they did not need to hear. But everything else was done in front of them. Mm. So you learn from that. Absolutely. You grow up and you say, in my home, this is how things were done. Absolutely. In my house, this is how yeah. my grandparents were. This is how my mother and father treated each other. And the fact that uh, all this is, 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 is at the end, you know, the couple is fixing the, 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 their situation. Mm. It says yeah. to the kids, yes, people do have disagreements. Yeah. But at the end of the day, Let's fix them. Yeah. These two sitting you know, in front of you. I know that every, one yeah, every one of us have a certain homecoming Christmas story. Yeah, and sure. uh, we certainly cannot escape the culture shock yes, in our Christmas has. stories. I because, yeah, because I know yeah. that um, whenever I go home for Christmas and when we come back with my Caucasian, my white colleagues, you know, we discuss what you did for Christmas. They'll tell me I went to Mauritius, I went to the Bahamas. And then Simpiwe, <laughs> what did you do for Christmas? I went home. Yes. Hey, no, I'm glad you went home for Christmas? <laughs> yes, I went home. I was weeding the fields. Yeah. I was fixing the fence. Like, a, <laughs> they just can't get it. <laughs> it's like what my son and her children say. They say there's December things. <laughs> if you say we're going to the Eastern Cape by the beach or the village, they say, oh, and you want to go in June. They look at you and say, oh, but that's December <laughs> things. Exactly. <laughs> and having said that, I'm actually glad that you raised that. And uh, how did you, you know, interpret the storyline given to you by the writers? I think for me it's very important is that black people are beautiful. Yep. There's so much positivity there. And for us it was, can we make normal black lives and problems be majestic mm, and beautiful mm. on the cinematic screen? Yeah. So there are certain rules that I gave to people is that one, everyone must be beautiful in terms of their costume, that even rural life, because I don't remember real life as dirty or dusty. Mm. For me, there's so much color. When I go home at Koba Koba, and then you see how nice the huts and the houses look and how much care and given it, yeah. attention was given to them. So for me, it was that no matter what we do, we must do it with a certain level of respect, yes. but also yes. admiration and love. So as you saw, as, as even Mamtoko saw, as we went on, first you get the crew, and the crew's all rowdy, because that's what they do. But then as they started looking, and they're looking at the performances, you'd get them just quietly going down on their own and then just giving Mam Toko, Tatu Timi, Tatu Chris, Kabbalash, a time for them to just be able to play. And mm. I love that sense of reverence and respect that they yeah. had. So oh, they really, commanded, mm. they're legends. And, and Gudi, yeah. just watching the film, how yeah. does that make you feel? Just, uh, you know, seeing your work and seeing your name uh, uh, in the credits. Warm, fuzzy me. and joyful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. is I how imagine. I feel and that's how I hope the audience feels because that is how I felt. Oh, I absolutely. wanted to give everyone a piece of home to take with them. Sure. Yeah. And sure. yeah, I feel warm, fuzzy and joyful and I pray and I hope that everyone goes to the cinema and feels that way too. Yeah. Definitely. 11th yeah. of October, guys. Let's go support. <laughs> all right, all right. Unfortunately, <laughs> we have to end it there because we have to take news. But uh, Lady Nkuli and Mam Togo, thank you so much for joining us. We do appreciate your time. Bye-bye, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, love you always. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we just spoke to the writer and director of the film Homecoming, an African Christmas in Kurisbego and Lili Maki, and award-winning veteran actress Mam Togo Nchinga.